I've been everywhere, and I've done everything Same, same as, as you. you Think we're different, but we're the same, just different problems in the brain Think you like the radio, yeah, that's it to the queers You're a moron on your cell phone, I'm playing music, drinking beer how about that? As always, thank you for listening to Headbangers and Hooligans. Your host, as always, Scumalicious, on a wonderful Tuesday afternoon here in Iowa. Jughead's Revenge. This is one band that I haven't really dug into very much and I apologize for that because this band see I'm speechless when I talk about them uh, real quick the uh, current band right now Joe Doherty vocals uh, Joey Remisi or Remichi on guitar Eric Buto on drums and AJ Kandasta on drums and I hope I didn't slaughter those names that uh, wasn't my intention uh, 1989 uh, out of Los Angeles, California this band the one thing that they do that I really appreciate is the fact that they just get after it. It's not always melody, you know, and they insert melody in certain songs, uh, but it's kind of, they go after it. They're the one band that you can honestly say, wow, that's hardcore punk. Because you look up all these bands and and it says hardcore punk and you'll see Jughead's Revenge and then Good Charlotte. I mean, come on. Good Charlotte's a fucking pop band and I've already talked about that at nauseum. But this band here, and I remember the first time I heard them and it was Joe D. I'll just call him Joe D. You know, like we've known each other our whole lives. Well... I've been listening to him for almost 20 years, so I feel like I know him anyway. That voice, though, it just, it's so big and powerful. And right before I got on here to do this podcast today, I checked out a live performance. This was probably about a year ago, I think. I, I don't remember the date. Anyway, he sounded really good. Like... A lot of these bands I that I've grown up on, I hear them play now, and it's not quite the same. J- just a few bands, you know. Most of the bands, the ones that I call my bands, you know, in quotation marks. Oh, by the way, you gotta love the uh, sound effects. We're outside, folks. I just felt like doing it outside. That way, when the cars drive by. They're like, what the fuck? Look at him. He's talking to his laptop. And you know, all the dogs come. And you might hear some weird noises. Pay no attention. It's just the dogs licking my legs or humping it. Anyway. Some of those bands that I was referring to. Yeah, some of the performances, not so good. But I'm telling you, Joey... On guitar and Joe D, they are the two original members, as, as far as I know, uh, and they've had a few different bass players and drummers. But those two, I know, have been there from the start. It's like it's 1989, and for me as a fan, you bet your ass I was excited about that. So let's do this. Let's give a little respect to a band that not a ton of people know about and hopefully after you hear this podcast you'll go check them out they're worth your time
So let's kick this baby off. Song 15. Love Me Tender. Yes, that is an Elvis cover. Off of their album, It's Lonely at the Bottom, 1992. And it starts out soft, like the original. Like Elvis would sing it, and then they kick it in, and then it becomes Jughead's Revenge. And I'm just telling you, it's so fucking cool to listen to them cover an Elvis song. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think they kind of have a fascination with Elvis because on their uh, album, Image is Everything, they have a song called Helvis. And in the video 4961, a song that I will talk about later, in that video, there's a part in there where he's dressed up as Elvis. Hey, I'm going to hate on, on him for that. Elvis is the king, man. That ain't changing either. You know, it ain't the Beatles. It's not. I think Elvis is the king of rock and roll. That's just me. And you can't hate on Elvis, man. Holy shit. Just think about all the women he had. Just fucking insane. All right. Song number 14. Eliminator off of Elimination. Man, I love these lyrics. As I put my gun to the head of God, thoughts of all the things I should have done. Is the mirror of life always what you claim? You know? And you can kind of picture yourself looking at, looking at the mirror, you know? Question life a little bit, your faith. And for me personally, and I'm not going to get on a big religious fucking rant here. There's something. I have no idea what it is. But there's something, right? We don't just die and then that's it, right? And maybe it's not. I just, for me personally, it's hard for me to believe that there was this gigantic explosion and then we just evolved from a little tiny microorganism, right? Because the brain is so complicated, we don't even use 80% of our brain. There's got to be something to that, right? But, yeah, that's kind of fucking crazy. I'm talking about Jughead's Revenge and creation of life. <laughs> you never know. You never know. In my show, it goes off the tracks a lot. All right, number 13, Show the World. And that's off of Elimination 2. Acting like a badass, making it up for what I had. Let's go out and drink some booze. My tattoo says I'm born to lose. And Jughead's Revenge is the best band at shredding punk wannabes, right? The fashion punks. You know, the ones that I talk about all the time that go to Hot Topic and they got all the t-shirts and the stupid fucking belts and all that shit. You know, ooh, look at him. And it's like I said yesterday. Like they're bitching about how, oh, it's so tough being a teenager nowadays. You know, even though I get every fucking thing I want, you know. And they're driving. Some of these kids, man. Have you seen some of the fucking cars they're driving? Are you fucking kidding me? Get the fuck out of here with that shit. You ain't got it that bad. And, listen, I know high school can be a fucking bitch. Because, you know, it's all, you, you know, the little cliques and all that shit. We understand that. But... Fuck. It, it, it's not that bad. And trust me, when you get out of high school, you realize how tough it really is when you got to start actually paying for all your own shit. Not so fun anymore. All right, number 12. Afraid. And this song is off 13 Kitty Favorites. And I'm not going to use the word ballad because I hate that fucking word, especially when it comes to fucking punk bands. Ballads are for glam metal bands, okay? You know, the Ramones didn't record a ballad. You know, I mean, Green Day kind of did, but Green Day's not a punk band anymore. It, let's just call it, it's a softer Jughead's Revenge song, but it's so catchy, all right? And 
Joey sounds really good on the song too. And the one thing, and I've been talking, well, a little bit, referring to Joe, his voice, how unique it is. Joey, the guitar player, no one ever talks about him. Ever. And he is so fucking good. The dude shreds. He play he plays all the solos. He does all the neat little guitar fills, little hammer ons and pull offs. And he he's just so good. So I'm giving him a gigantic shout out today. Alright. I'm afraid of what you hit. Hate me hate myself like others did. Left me afraid of everything. Well, you knew it was going to happen eventually. I know. I still sound like shit. But it's a catchy song. And and it's raw, too. 13 Kitty Favorites. It's just... It really is. It's just pure aggression. Uh, a couple of the songs, they, they infuse a little bit of melody. But like I said before, Jughead's Revenge, a lot of the time, they're like, we're playing this shit. We don't give a fuck if you like it or not. Our music ain't going to get played on the radio. And that's how they do it. And I love that. No compromise. Okay? 30 Foot Fall from Texas. They had a song called No Compromise. That works for Jughead's Revenge, too. All right. Number 11. Sleepwalking off of Just Joined. Um, For those that don't know this, this was on Nitro Records. Dexter from The Offspring started that record label. And listen... I'm not a huge uh, Offspring fan, but his fucking record label kicked ass. He had Jughead's Revenge on there. He had The Vandals, I believe. Also, he had uh, Jughead's Revenge. And I'm trying to think. Uh, There's a couple other bands. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, But just joined... For me personally, I think it's their most complete album. And this song, Sleepwalking, and I'm going to finally use the word melody because it it does have it in this song. It's heavy and melodic in these lyrics. I love them. Standing in the rain, you're mad at me again. Message is so clear and I want out. Take your approval to someone who really cares because I'm too tired to deal and it's not really fair. Yeah. Nice. It just, the words fit perfectly with the music, and when you listen to it, you'll understand what I'm saying. And I just realized what I did back there, didn't I? I said Jack has Revenge twice on Nitro Records. The Vandals, Guttermouth, and Jug has Revenge. Those are the three bands I can remember that were on that label. Oh, 30 Foot Fall. And then, it's it just whatever shut down but I give him credit man he he had a good label I thought it kicked ass and I'm telling you these record labels now are just god awful the ones I used to love like Epitaph that Brett Bad Religion started oh my what the fuck is he doing with that record label seriously what is he fucking doing you know, the, the fucking metalcore bands and all that shit on there? Ugh, come on, Brad. You're better than that. Number 10. Just What I Needed off Pearly Gates. That's right. The cover of Cars song, and it kicks ass. I don't mind you hanging here and wasting all my time. And, of course, Joe D sings a lot better. But you've heard the song, and, oh, it's so fucking good the guitar Joey kills it it's just a great cover and I love the cars and it makes sense that a punk band would cover the cars at least it does to me anyway so already to number nine and the song is tearing down the world and it's off of image is everything this is the first song I heard from him This is the song, when I heard it, I said, I'm in. I am a fucking Jughead's Revenge fan. And you have to remember, I'm in Iowa. I'm in the middle of a fucking cornfield. So for us to find new music, it's not easy. 
and I bitched about it a lot, you know, the local rock station. Laser 103.3, crank it up. They always have the little snippet or little recording from the guy from Godsmack, you know, with his East Coast accent. Yeah, it's Laser 103.3, crank it up, fuckers. Just, oh, shut up. And then the next song they play is fucking Limp Biscuit. Are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, tearing down the world. Oh, my goodness. She drew a gentle hand and asked me why I hid. She gave me something that the world had never did. Contained in a one-way ticket to a place in hell, my conscience got there first as well. And, yeah. When you... When you hear those lyrics, you're like, yeah, fuck, I know what you mean. Let's go to hell. You know, we hear that saying all the time. You know, it's, it's hell here on earth. Oh, here I go with the fucking religious shit again. But it, it makes sense when I hear those lyrics. And by the way, I titled this, the show, Life Sucks. Make the worst of it. That's a Jughead's Revenge saying. And I had the t-shirt. Matter of fact, I had two t-shirts. And I wore them both out. And it's a bummer. I love those t-shirts. And hopefully they still sell them because I'm getting another one. Yeah. Is that the greatest saying ever? Life sucks, so make the worst of it? <laughs> Fuck yeah, I think so. Good stuff. Alright, number eight. And we're going back to just joined again telling you it's a really really good album and uh, I ordered it through the mail and I remember the day I got it this was awesome because I told you I had two t-shirts not just one because I only ordered one but they sent me a double order on everything so I got two CDs two shirts and then two stickers some other stuff and I knew it was a mistake, and I kind of felt bad. You know, here I was saying, oh, I don't know what happened. They just closed up. Probably because of assholes like me. I should have called them up and said, hey, you sent me a double order. I'll, I'll ship them back. No, I kept them. I apologize, Nitro Records. I do. I fucking, I killed a record company. Shit. Got to be careful. The choices you make. All right, just start shooting, and this song, and I believe Just Join came out in either 1999 or 2000, somewhere around there. Just Start Shooting is about bullying. And tell me that wouldn't fit now. You know, all the fucking bullying shit. And, sorry, going off the tracks a little bit again. This bullying shit where people just fuck with people because they're different. Knock it off. Or, you know, beating the shit out of them. You know, I bitch about the emo bands and the emo kids that listen to it. Like, why, why are you listening to this, you know? What the fuck, right? But I'm not going to go fucking beat up somebody because they're different than me. You know, and I, Steve Wilkos had a show. This, this young, pretty girl was wanting to be a cheerleader. And they just fucking ripped on her and shredded her. She had to move. Her family moved her to a different school. Don't, don't let them motherfuckers push you around. We're all fucking different. If we were all the same, do you realize how fucking boring this planet would be? Fuck, man, seriously. If you're, you know, and yeah, I, I hate emo. I hate the way they dress and cry and ball. I'm not gonna go fucking try to beat up emo kids. It's their right to fucking listen to that shit. And it's their right to say, fuck you, scumalicious. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Anyway, these lyrics. Tell me these lyrics don't explain everything. You're not one of us. You don't look the same. You won't kiss our ass. We don't like your name. We call it five on one. You'll hate us when we're done. Just, and when Joe sings that, he's got the passion. And Joey's putting them nice little gu guitar hooks in there. And I don't know the exact lineup for that album. But one thing Jughead's 
revenge has always had. Oh, actually, I do. I could be wrong, but I think Ty Smith was the drummer on that album. Why is that important? Because he was the drummer for Guttermouth also. Anyway, but their drums always sound so good, you know? And for people that don't listen to music like I do, and I know I'm fucking abnormal, nobody listens to music like I do. I pick apart every little fucking thing, and it some, it's ridiculous. I get that. But, oh, wow, those drums sound good. No, 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 no. Just because you hear a drummer playing the same beat over and over in a song doesn't make them a great drummer, okay? It makes them decent or solid. They can keep rhythm. But Jughead's Revenge, those drums are a huge part. And his name, and I, is AJ. I'm just going to say AJ. I don't want to slaughter his last name. He's good. I seen the video with that I was talking about of them playing live. Nice little fills. They get after it. All right? Hey, and the Ramones is... I love the Ramones. Jughead's Revenge are not the Ramones. And they're not just playing three chords and sniffing glue. They're bringing the power and they're saying, Listen here, motherfucker, we're going to grab you by the throat. And you're going to fucking like our band. Well, not like that, but you, you understand what I'm saying. All right, number seven. Weight of the World, also off of Just Joined. And here I go with that word again, melodic. It really is. I would look for you up and down. Sorry, let me say that again. I would look for you up and down. Da -na -na -na. I thought you would always be around. Da -na -na -na. In your heart, you carried the weight of the world. That would always be your part. How'd you like that, Joe D? I know it sucked. You do it so much better. But when you listen to that song, you'll understand that is a sing-along chorus. And Jughead's Revenge is not that sing-along chorus kind of band, which is a good thing. There's plenty of those. I like the rage, you know, and being pissed off. I don't, I shouldn't use rage. I'm angry. They're angry some of the time, and that's a good thing. Number six, Forever, off Images Everything. And this song, it might give you chicken skin. It, you might think of somebody important to you when you listen to this song. By the time I heard they told me you were gone, it nearly sent me through the floor. A thousand times I thought I still don't understand what you were living for. You know, yeah. Uh, I, anybody that's lost somebody they loved or is close to them, I think you can relate to that song. And uh, it's especially for me. You know, a few days ago, the neighbors, fortunately, uh, lost their son in an accident, and it's just. Like, that's the one thing about life that sucks. It's going to end for all of us. And, man, that's just not the fun part of it. It's just not. It's that fucking simple. So let's not get depressed. That's a very ugly downer topic. How about an upper, okay? We went from heroin to cocaine on the next song, Fuck Shit Up. <laughs> and I'm, that's the song, Fuck Shit Up. It's about a minute and 30 seconds. And that's pretty self-explanatory, right? And I, that really is a simple but great saying. What you going to do today? I'm going to fuck shit up. Okay, you have fun. It's that simple. Number four, The People's Pal. This goes back to Images Everything. And I love the beginning of this song. Dealing with me is a waste of your time. You say that I'm an asshole. I say get in line. <laughs> the People's Pal. And 
I'm telling you the guitar riff on there is perfect the drums the bass it's just one of those songs where everything just jumps out and grabs you I've said that a lot too haven't I that's what Jughead's Revenge does they they reach out and they throw the haymaker and it lands a lot you're gonna end up with black eyes you know bruises a couple cuts this ain't e easy listening okay Number three, Victims and Volunteers. Listen to this song right before I did this show because I love it that much. And I wrote down here, Terrific Guitar Hook, because it is. And the bridge, right before the chorus, every time, I'm telling you, you're like, I want to rewind that part and listen to it again. You love to bring the chaos in our lives. Still, it took the world to say goodbye. You go your way, and I'll go mine. Victims and volunteers. And it's just so good to be talking about this band because I've loved them for so long. And yesterday, I realized in a year, I didn't, I'd mentioned them. And I, I did. I felt guilty. I was like, these guys are so fucking good. I cannot believe I dropped the ball. And I looked in the mirror. I, I took a long, hard look in the mirror. And I said, Scum Malicious, what are you going to fucking do, huh? You fucking pansy. You going to do that Jughead's Revenge? Knock that shit off. And so here we go. Number two. Oh my goodness. It's the song that I mentioned before, 4961, the video, where he dresses up as Elvis. This fucking song is so awesome. You have to go watch the video after you listen to this. And they are just ripping on all these kids. And we've all seen them. And probably some of us have known people like that. Every trend that comes in. Okay, first they're a headbanger. And they're wearing all the Iron Maiden shit. Then they're a punk rocker and they've got, you know, the Sex Pistols t-shirt. Then they go alternative. And it's so funny because in the video each time uh, Joe's, you know, changing his appearance. He's like Kiss one time and then a glam band guy and then Elvis. And then there's these three younger kids they show that are trying to be like the real hardcore nasty punk band. It's just a fucking great video. And, of course... The lyrics are always great. When you wake up ready for work, do you think of your friends? All of those jerks who do nothing all day, waste their lives away, never had a job, everything for free. Welcome to the punk rock music, best. But oh god, that part right there, there's just a little fill. And the the kick drum, oh it's paradise to my ears. It is. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you listen to the song. And number one, in my opinion, the best song that Jughead's Revenge has ever recorded, These Valley Streets, the lead track off of Pearly Gates, their last full-length album. Heavy, melodic, great lyrics, and I'm telling you, it's in my top ten songs of all time. That's how much I love this song. Among those sleepless nights that ended up so far behind lived the memories of a place that I would always find. People tell me things have changed along these valley streets, but I don't think it's so. Great fucking song. But, and I know I keep repeating myself, but just a great band. Check them out. They've got other great songs besides these 15. Uh, it's worth the time. They are. This band is worth your time to listen to. There you go. And don't forget, I will be back later today. And I'm going to be talking about 10 songs from the 90s that I can't fucking stand. All right? Take it easy. And if it's easy, take it twice. I'm out.